It is good to be back in America. I was in London for a week, got done in New York, and the whole rest of the crew flew home. Jay Glazer, by example, flew home back to LA, stayed there for three or four days, came out to London. I had the family with me and I just couldn't figure out how to do it logistically. Do I just go to London and I tell my wife, hey, you got to figure this out with the two kids and uh, you know, you'll be fine and uh, your, your plane leaves for Portland in an hour. How do I do that? So we all just packed up, went over to London, had a great time, and we had about five days to be tourists because I was there to call the Bellator event. That show wasn't until Saturday. I'm in London on Monday, and I was the only one there. The whole rest of the crew went home. Jay Glazer, by example, Jay Gla flew home from New York back to California, stayed there three or four or five days, caught a plane, went out to London. For me, living in Portland, it's not that easy. I imagine Jay had a direct flight, by example coming out of LAX. It's not, it's not like that for me. It, 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 it would have, there'd be a whole big thing involved, or I could just be in New York, jump across the ocean, land in London. So I had about five days to be a tourist and I saw it all. I must tell you guys of all the things you'll ever hear you need to do when you're in the UK, the London eye, I will put that at the absolute top of the list. And it's basically a huge Ferris wheel. Now it is far more advanced it is far more expensive. It is far more dramatic and beautiful, safe for that matter, than any Ferris wheel you may be able to relate to, thinking of like a, a county fair or the state fair or a theme park or something like that. But it's basically a Ferris wheel. It just goes around. You get in it, it never stops moving. That includes when you go to get on it. You get on it as it's in motion. The doors open up, boom. Your group piles in, doors shut. 30 minutes later, it comes back down, doors open. You got about 20 feet, anywhere in that 20 feet to jump off, or you're going to be too high to do it. And if you ever want to see a city, we happen to go on a clear day, but if you ever want to see a city, my gosh, I can I can definitely tell you guys, I saw London without traveling around and taking tours and hoofing it and getting a map out. I saw London all because of this thing called the London Eye. And I felt like somebody should have told me about it. I don't think it's some kind of a secret, but I have friends that live in the UK or friends that have visited the UK and nobody ever told me, hey, this is a must attend event. So I'm telling you guys, if you ever go to London, make sure you check out the London Eye. You will be glad you did. So I get home and that was a, that would turn into a bit of a melee itself. The show got done at 2 a.m. local time in London, okay? Musousi, in a surprise, in a big upset, loses his belt to Lovato, great fight. Paul Daly, Eric Silva, great fight. I'm just the, the whole Gallagher, great night of action. But it wraps up at 2 a.m. My alarm is set for 4 a.m. I'm not even back. That's when the show got done. I got to get back to the hotel, shower, get out of my clothes. My alarm set for 4 a.m. Cars leaving at 5 a.m. Planes leaving at 7 a.m. So everything's fine. Aside from being on the grind a little bit, everything was fine. And we switched planes in Chicago. And Chicago's going to take us straight home to Portland. And, you know, you guys can relate to this. Anybody that's been gone for any meaningful period of time, boy, there's nothing more exciting than, than the barn being in sight. You're going to be in your own bed, your own surroundings, your own refrigerator, your own remote control. We're so excited. All of a sudden, the captain comes on and says, uh, hey, we're about to take an emergency landing. Better safe than sorry. Not really sure what's wrong with this aircraft. Everybody bear with me. Flight attendants prepare for arrival. Okay. Not a whole ton of information, but they put us down in Omaha. Now, if there was anywhere in the world that I was going to be stuck for a 24-hour period, I would have to imagine Omaha would not be on the list. So we end up in Omaha. When the plane touches down, it ha we stay on the plane for about an hour. They then decide they're going to deboard us. If you want to use the bathroom or, you know, grab a snack, hit the Starbucks. Great, get off the plane, another hour. And then they make the announcement, this plane's never leaving Omaha. We don't know what's wrong with it. We don't have anybody here that can fix it. As a matter of fact, we're gonna fly a pilot in, or rather we're gonna fly a mechanic in to work on the plane tomorrow and he may not be able to fix it. Goodbye everybody. Okay, great. So I rent a car, we go get all of our bags and we got all sorts of bags. And I got strollers and kids bags and parents bags and my own bag, I got the scale I've been carrying around. Right, I went out to New York for the fight, so I took my own scale with me. It's got all these bags. So I go rent a Suburban, 
load it up, drive it about two miles to the nearest hotel, check in, fine. Everything's fine. We rebook our tickets on a totally different airline. We were on American. We moved everything over to Alaska. So aside from some of the logistical hassles, I must tell you, we had a very relaxing night in Omaha. But with that said, it made it all the more positive feeling. It's like, it's like losing your wallet. It feels so good when you find it again. So after we went through all the trials and turbulations, we made it home. And here I am. I've only been here a few hours, came right over to the studio to come and talk to you guys. And I'll tell you, of all the great fights, the Bellator, oh, I think you guys probably had a really great time. Probably lost some money. Most of you probably did not bet on Lovato. I will share with you, I, I certainly thought Gegard was the favorite in that fight. Real tussle, 25-minute battle, and Lovato just has some positions that you're not going to beat him in. And he was very good at forcing many minutes and many moments and many different rounds of that contest into those positions. Him on top, him in back control, him in side control. But ultimately, he made it a grappling match on the ground with himself in the top position. That's what the judges had to look at. So we all had to look at. That's what the majority of the fight was. One thing that Lovato does really well is he will threaten at all times. So even though he never got a finish, a submission on Gegard, even though he was never even close to a submission or a finish on Gegard, he threatened it nonstop. I will tell you guys this once again, a fight is a dance and only one person can leave. Somebody has to go out and take control. And from the beginning of this sport, all through this era and until the ends of time, okay, the best defense is always going to be a good offense. So Lovato didn't have to worry about big attacks from Gegard. He just didn't. Because when it's a dance and Lovato's leading, even though he's not getting those submissions, he's threatening them. He's never lazy. He's never sitting and complacent. He's attacking, he's attacking, he's attacking, making Gegard react. 25 minutes later of one guy reacting and the other guy being proactive, come on, see how those matches are going to go. I think that we will see a rematch. I think we'll see a totally different fight. Gegard is one of those guys. I mean, he doesn't lose to the same guy twice. He's one of those guys that feels you once, generally beats you, but if you do get the jump on him, he feels you once, he comes back, and he's a different fighter. Let's see what happens there. But I do think that a, a rematch, even an immediate rematch, might be a very good guess as to where they're going to go with that division.